What is up, guys? I'm Charles Williams, a.k.a. The Swole Fester, here to educate you on health and social being. This is episode 7 of Overcome. And I'm excited, guys, because we are actually three weeks out, boy. Thrace. It's crazy because I honestly, like, it. I did, forgot we were three weeks out until Derek reminded me yesterday. He's like, hey, bro. We're three weeks out. Like, it's crazy how time flies. Like, like when you first get started with prep, it's like, man, I'm ready to get on the bar. I'm ready to compete. And the next thing you know, yo, it's like three weeks away. So, about to head up to Metroflex Gym. Going to be main, meeting up with Michael. It's our heavy squat and deadlift session today. I feel like I've been showing you guys that quite a bit, but just just so exciting. I'll be sure I'll show you guys, like, you know, upper body volume day next episode or something like that. But this time, we are keeping it 100% raw. Just going to lift, going to train, going to talk to you guys about a few things, going to bust out the singlet because, you know, got to practice how we play with being three weeks out. Um, one thing I want to address right now to be in the video is that, like, you know, especially on Instagram, ever since I announced, like, forever ago that I was doing this uh, USPA meet, Bend the Bar, um, a lot of people have been asked, like, hey, bro, aren't you worried, though, man? Like, you know, um, this meet isn't a drug-tested one because, like, USPA does have a drug-tested federation, but it's small and it's growing, and this is not one of their drug-tested meets. And they're like, aren't you worried about that, man? You're going up against people who are natty and this and that. And I'm like, guys, I, I don't care. Like, first of all, like I said, the whole purpose of me even doing this meet was twofold. One, so I can get another meet in, kind of like see where my strength's at and kind of use that like just to build off a better baseline. Two, originally the plan was after my last meet, Power Fest in June, was to do um, Raw Nationals. You guys already know if you kept up with the channel and like my videos over it that um, they had it to where like you couldn't really like record the way you wanted to as far as YouTube videos. I wouldn't be able to take you guys through it the way that I like to do with my style as well as the fact that the... Um, US APL as a whole have been just doing a lot of things that I didn't personally agree with and I didn't want to be one of these lifters that was out here constantly complaining about their decisions but still giving them their money so I decided to just take us like you know take a step back from them just for the rest of this year um, and then kind of see what the game plan will be for next year as far as you know if I want to like you know do a qualifying meet and then maybe go to nationals um, next year but that's why I'm doing this meet and then also I just you know I want to see what a USPA meet is like I, is like I heard that like you know they're really lit they're really fun this one specifically though it's a local meet supposed to be like really really hype so I figured okay it's just something Derek and I can get into to kind of just have the experience for it. but I'm not tripping over like people being natural or not because at the end of the day I'm not going in there with the mindset of like oh I have to place first it's the same mindset I always have guys I'm gonna go in there see what I can do um see what I can hit and if that ends up placing me like in a spot first second or third great if not not a big deal because at the end of the day guys whether you lose to somebody because they're on drugs or because they like you know have better genetics than you whatever like going to a power to me you can kind of look at everyone's numbers like the best they've hit so far and pretty easily predict who's probably gonna win unless two people are just like really close to each other plus don't count your boy out yet, because sometimes some of these guys out here that are on all this stuff, it's because they don't know how to train correctly and get strong without it. So don't count your boy out yet. But anyway, let's head to the gym. All right, guys, so we're at the gym. Homies Mitch, Michael, JD. We're already here getting it in. I'm late. I have no excuse. I'm just late. But uh, <laughs> anyway, we're about to start warming up. Today, I have a double at RP6 and then a single at RP8. So just like last week, I have to do build up doubles until I get to the double at six, and then build up singles until I get to the single at eight. So, hey, ain't much else to say. Let's get right into it. So Michael's eventually going to start warming up with above my top set, so right now I'm just happy we have like similar weight on the bar. Alright guys, so we have like 380, 381, something like that on the bar. Uh, I didn't bother showing up the build ups this time because it's pretty much the exact same thing that I did last last week. I just did my normal warm ups, got up to about like uh, 308, did a double, went to 330, did a double, 353, did a double. Um, 370 did a double. This is gonna be my last warm up or like build up double, and then based upon that, I'll know what I'm gonna hit for my top double at RP6. Last week I hit like 398 for my double at RP6. I'm actually feeling a little bit better, surprisingly, um, today than what I did last week. So I guess fatigue isn't 
quite as bad as what I thought it'd be today. So I'm thinking maybe closer to like, you know, 402, 403 for my double RP6. And then we'll do the build ups to see what we have for the single RP8. So that felt <laughs> really, really good. That actually moved pretty quick for me. For me, relative to my, y'all already know, speed is relative to the individual. That moved really well for me. So I definitely think like 402 or 403, whatever it is, is gonna move pretty well for me for my. Folks, it's deadlifting. I think 402 will move pretty well for my double at RP6. If you guys notice, um, I'm taking my time with my bracing and my setup. One thing that I've noticed is a lot of people that get in really good position, they tension well, but then they take a really shallow brace and just rush into the hole. Maybe once you're tensioning, you're that nice um, starting position, you want to take a big breath. You want to brace hard, feel that belt, brace, and then hold it, really feel the tension fully built up, and then descend into the hole, maintaining that tension. You want to think of yourself as a spring, loading yourself into the hole, and then exploding back out. If you really brace hard, you're not only going to have better tension, but you'll be able to maintain better position while still being exposed out of the hole. But anyway, let's see how this top set goes. Yes, sir, come on. Easy work. No more. Yeah. We're done. Yeah, You're that one. Done. Coming in. The goal was an eight and a half, and it was definitely a true RP eight and a half. What would you say was the biggest difference between the five one, the five eighteen, that made the five eighteen? Um, his spotters. Most definitely, I don't know. I think Marcel is gonna show both sets, mm -hmm. yeah. but for sure, the biggest difference. If you notice with the five hundred one, I was kind of just trying to rush through it, yeah. just get the set done, not really bracing, yeah. not really slowing down the reps, versus with the five eighteen. Took your time. I took my time. Yeah. Of course, the set is gonna take longer. Yeah. But you're in better um, position. Yeah. Yeah. You're able to brace harder, 
you're able to, obviously the bar is going to whip a little bit, so you're able to kind of let it do its thing and then slow down, stabilize everything, exactly. and just take your time with every single rep. There you go. See, so yeah, guys, that was like the perfect example of what I was talking about, about once you're in position, you still got to brace hard and take your time to feel that tension build up. It's worth it. Anyway, so that double at RPE 6 with 403 felt really, really good. Um, it felt true the RPE. I felt the bar roll up a little bit on my second set just because since I actually had my singlet all the way on, I didn't take full time to really like dig my back into it as much as I was on my uh, on my warm ups building up to it. So I'm about to do 418 or 420, whatever this is, for my build up single and based upon that, see what I have for my RPE 8 and really take my time digging my back into the bar. Alright guys, so as you guys can see, I ended up going with 425 for the single. Uh, simply because when I by comparison to last week, that 420 just it didn't feel as good. It still felt sub eight, but it was slower. And even though I don't go based off on speed, the positioning didn't feel as good either. Like I could feel that like my left elbow was more winged. I couldn't keep my elbows down the way I wanted to, and that's why you guys saw the bar like had like that tilt. So I decided to just play it safe, go with 425, uh, and that definitely felt a lot closer to the eight than what 430 would have. 430 like may have been the eight if I got perfect positioning, but that wasn't happening. Um, it was just to be expected. Like I said, Michael and I are experiencing the same thing today. We felt really good last week. This is like our fourth week for both of us, I believe. Well, I know where it is for me for sure. Um, on this current block, so the fatigue's kind of hitting. And even though our warmth felt really good, when we got to the heavier loads, it kind of hit a little bit harder than what I expected it to. Not a bad, not a big deal. Still glad that I was able to go up for the double at six with 402 and hitting um, 425 for like RP8, eight, eight and a half. It's definitely nothing for me to be upset about. Still improvement from. Uh, last week and the good thing is I know I for sure could have gotten one more with that and then either like a third one after or at least half of that that's why I say RP8 to eight and a half they would have been slow but I would have been able to maintain that position even though it's not the most optimal position that I want to be in but anyway not a big deal I'm gonna bast <laughs> blast all these back down sets and then kill deadlifts All right, guys, so back down says did not feel great. What's crazy is they weren't that much heavier than uh, last week. I'm pretty sure my back down doubles were almost the exact same weight as last week, just because it was a greater percentage taken from my top set than last week. And my back down triples were only like 10 pounds heavier. But this is the fourth week of this block, and simply due to like 
the fatigue, you know, it's hard to stay in position, everything's just feeling a little bit more eh, but that's exactly why what we've been doing is, um, you guys know how usually, you know, week one is like RP6s and then certain percentage of my back down, up for my back downs, then week two RP7, slightly higher percentage, and we build that up for, for about four weeks, and then we scale it back and start back over again with RP6s and a little bit heavier than what we did that first week, the previous block. But what Brendan's been doing with my programming lately is in addition to the wave loading, we're pretty much tapering my fourth weeks of each block as well. So my intensity days are set up exactly as they would be, but then my volume days are a little bit less volume. So for example, instead of doing like a top set on squats on my volume day and then maybe like three back down sets, I'll have like a top set, then one back down set. Same thing for like the sumo deadlifts after that. Or for my bench, instead of doing like a top set, then three back down sets, I'll have like one or two back down sets. So we taper off each, like every fourth week, just so that way I'm getting the benefit of, it, of these adaptations. It makes more sense to do a little bit less work if you can get the benefit of all the work you did than to do way more work but not even get the benefit of all of it because you can't adequately recover. So yeah, but anyway, now we get to the fun stuff, deadlifts. Deadlifts should hopefully go a little bit better. What are we gonna see? You think that's gonna go better, Michael? I think so. All right, let's get it. Alright guys, so my warm-ups are feeling really, really good. And that's how I know the fatigue I'm feeling is more just like acute fatigue. I've emphasized this so much on the channel before with past meets, but I just want to say again, you should not be feeling like complete death and crap three, four weeks out from a meet. Yeah, you're gonna have some days that feel better than others due to acute fatigue, but if you're actually peaking correctly, chronic fatigue should not be like just destroying you at that point. You should be feeling really good, feeling strong, feeling at your best leading up into that meet so you can really perform on game day. But anyway. Uh, last week I did 503 for my single at RP6, so I'm going to do around that, like a little bit less for my last warm-up, and then see what we have for the single at RP7. Alright guys, so I'm... As I'm going, sending sets to Brendan and posting my sets on my stories and stuff like that, he saw the 475 and was like, hey man, it's just moving well, but like, wake up, like, move with speed, move with intention. So I got a little bit more aggressive on that final one, felt really good. Um, I feel like we're gonna go with like 520. I've never moved that in RP7, but I think it's there today. So back at the crib, it's actually much later than when I left the gym just because I had to rush home and get some work done, which is why I didn't bother recording my accessory work. It's nothing you guys haven't seen before, just my split squats and then my side planks, but um, it was tapered off a little bit instead of doing two sets of split squats and two sets of side planks, it's just one set of each just because reducing you know, a set here and there on the accessory work for this week is part of the taper and actually ends up going a long way for getting rid of some of that fatigue. But anyway, all in all, man, today was a really, really solid session. I always love working out with like Mitch, JD, Michael, pretty much anyone who's like stronger than me. Like I don't have the weakest bench in the group, but I definitely have the weakest squat because they're all squatting like 500 plus and just being around them 
really, it just motivates me to be like, hey, you got to get better. Like, they're over here moving, you know, five, six hundred pounds. You have no excuse not to be able to move, like, you know, 400 pounds. And even though it's not so much about, like, oh, I want to, like, work hard to catch them. Because, like, once again, I understand how, like, you know, genetics, leverages, all that. It's about, I see them putting in work. So I got to put in work and it makes me want to do better. And plus, it's just, you know, just good getting the session in with the boys. Anyway, even though squats weren't um, exactly what I wanted to, still came in, got the work done. Deadlifts were amazing. I have never moved 580 pounds that fast, like ever, like a solid, true RP7. Back down sets felt great. Deadlifts really just been kind of like on like on the uprise um, these past few sessions. I feel like ever since I finally got my belt adjusted towards like in the correct notch where I can still brace in it properly, but actually get in proper position because it's not too tight or too loose like my deadlift just been flying it's like i've been hindering what my body can really do all this time because i wasn't able to get an adequate position but now i'm able to properly tension the lip get full activation out of my um my back my glutes my hamstrings everything and it's just been feeling really really good um squats are always going to be an uphill battle for me i know that just because of my leverage especially like my longer femurs it's never gonna like just be like my oh my best or most dominant lift but as i just you know get better at maintaining position and overall just get bigger that's going to be the main thing i'm going to focus on is trying to like you know just add more muscle to my uh, frame that's what's going to help me the most with the squat like sometimes guys you just got to work with what you've got and find ways to work around your weak points like on the bench press i don't have a huge arch and if i tried to force it more i would never have like the same arch that a lot of powerlifters do and i have pretty long arms relative to my frame but i still manage to work through it by putting on adequate muscles on my chest my triceps, my back, all the muscles that are involved in the bench press, really working on scapular stability and positioning and controlling the eccentric, maintaining tension, all those little things that go a long way, which has allowed me to get my bench up to 347 pounds, um, despite only weighing in the 160s, and hopefully I get to beat that three weeks from now. Deads out of everything, honestly, is probably like the best that I'm built for, even though like, yeah, my legs are longer, my arms are kind of long enough to help compensate it. Even though my position will never just look as beautiful as someone with long arms and short legs, it's the best that it can be for me and I'm really happy with it right now. Um, but yeah, that's why like for right now, like I'm weighing around like 165, 166 on average, which is actually really good. That's the most I've ever weighed like under Brendan, just because it's really hard to gain weight under him, just do like, you know, all the volume that we're doing, just having to eat enough. But I'm able to make maintain that really well right now and I'm pretty much going to stay there for the next three weeks for the mere fact that the top of my weight class is 165 pounds so I don't want to like go way over that then have to water cut for no reason um but after this meet definitely plan on pushing that even further trying to get back close to like you know 170 maybe even 175 or anything over 170 would be like you know a uh, weight PR as far as weight on the scale and just like like I said focus on building and growing in the off season so that I can really like come back strong for whatever meet I do after that but anyway enough rambling that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you're not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can do better. Like the video. Share. Subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later.